What's up, everybody? Welcome to Non Fungible Guys. My name is Devon C. Codrington, and this is a podcast about Web3, cryptocurrency, the blockchain, NFTs, uh, about your favorite restaurant. Sometimes it's about film and television and everything in between. I'm joined by my trusty co host, bro host, with the most bald head you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> Ryan, what's going on? What's going on, everyone? NFG <laughs> Ryan. Find me on all socials there, but uh, what's going on, Devon? Uh, nothing much. It's good. We're excited. My heart is racing. Um, we're joined by Michelle Munson. Michelle C. Munson. Don't forget to see everybody. Michelle C. Munson is the CEO and co-founder of Alluvio. Alluvio, uh, the, the content blockchain is what we're going to say here. Um, the, the slogan here is own your own desk, own, own your destiny. We, I don't know how exactly we discovered Olivio, but it is super exciting and we're really, really happy to have Michelle here with us to dive into this and really, really tackle everything that Olivio is and doing and plan to do. Michelle, welcome. Thank you for coming on the podcast. Hey guys, thanks so much for having me. And by the way, I do know how you found us. Ryan was an enthusiastic um, yeah. newbie uh, to the Warner Brothers movie verse. And he enthusiastically uh, came in and bought the Flash movie NFT, which I'm sure we're going to talk about today. Yep. And was one of the kindest and most knowledgeable people to jump on our tech discord. So um, we've been really happy that he's part of us. And um, I'm so glad I met you guys. Hopefully we'll have a good time talking today. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Yeah, that this is. is. Thank you. <laughs> I hate when we do the whole thing where we say the exact same thing. Can you tell Ryan and I have been friends since we were 10? Jesus. Yeah, it's been, yeah, like 20, 20 years or something like that. But um, yeah, that's exactly, you know what I was going to say? I know the origin story because I was sitting on vacation, just going through, I was browsing um, Decrypt website because yeah. I was just bored and, you know, I'm a nerd. So I was going through the the crypto, the news, and I was like, and my son's, a my seven-year-old's a huge fan of The Flash. And I said to mm -hmm. him, I'm like, we're going to go see The Flash. So I'm scrolling through the news reports. And I see the flash is going to be an NFT. And I was like, okay, well, so then I started looking movie theaters because I wanted to take them. It wasn't really showing anywhere where I was. And I was like, oh, it's only been a month. I'm like, okay, that's it. I'm going to get them the NFT and we have a little mini theater at home. So when I got home, I was like, okay, we're going to watch it. Yeah. So yeah, it was, Damn. it's, uh, it's kismet, I guess. I don't know. It just, it just works out that way. It just, I love it. <laughs> nice. I love it. Okay. So we're going to start off in the non-fungible guys ways where we just pivot and go left field. We normally say like, you know, you can find us on Twitter. Do we just say you can find us on x.com now? What the heck? Like, I don't even know if we're supposed to do that. We have to incorporate that into our whole podcast. I'm not happy about that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, is he trolling us? I don't know. Okay. Uh, enough of that. Michelle, we have a very, very hard question for you. Who <laughs> are you? Who is Michelle Munson? <laughs> In your own words, of course. Well, let's put it in the context of media on the blockchain, yeah. maybe yeah. as a simpler starting point. So um, you might wonder how in the world did I end up involved in something like this and, and why would a movie end up being released on the blockchain? Um, at least since uh, I got out of graduate school and tried to make myself productive in the tech industry, I've been working in... Um, content over the internet. And uh, I was an early entrepreneur in my career. I started something called Aspera, which uh, was a high-speed file transfer technology, brand mm. new, uh, created it from scratch, launched it. And at the time, one of the biggest problems plaguing content over the internet was how to move the big files around. Mm -hmm. And uh, that technology ended up getting adopted by a ton of media companies over a decade. And as streaming grew, the back lot supporting it with all these monster video files and then some related industries like biotech got bigger and bigger. Well, long story short, I learned a lot in the mm. process of being the CEO of that company about the whole uh, media economy and about content distribution. I also uh, had the, I would say, quote unquote, opportunity, um, you can take it for what it is, to integrate that technology into CDNs 
content delivery networks. Okay. And the biggest one at that time was Akamai. Now there are multiple players and into the public clouds against their storage networks, a la AWS. Mm -hmm. And in that process, I learned, uh, not just me, the I is a collective. We, at that time, that company had gotten pretty big. Um, we learned that, you know, there's a, a real deficit, if you will, of what the CDNs and the clouds were able to do for the modern needs of scalable streaming media. Gotcha. And so I sold Aspera to IBM, or and it again not an I, a collective group of us, right. and um, it was you know a big deal. And um, I stayed on for three plus years. As I left, um, the co-founder of Alluvio and I, both of whom also started Aspera, we decided that it was time that we were going to put together several ideas we had about content native networks to do something to really make a greenfield uh, approach to content distribution. And we felt that the time had come to organize it as a blockchain. And so we created this protocol from scratch called mm -hmm. the Content Fabric Protocol, along with a couple of our colleagues. And um, we launched this company, Alluvio, off the back of that. And um, we started to get um, use of this. Well, first of all, I might say, uh, to your point, if you're, you're asked, you asked about me, mm -hmm. obviously, I define myself in terms of what I do in <laughs> making tech. <laughs> so that so answers so one thing about me. But, but uh, <laughs> the other piece I would say is that that um, you know, point in time where we were launching Alluvio and thinking of it as both a utility network for content and as a blockchain um, was sort of the start of, of course, it was before the pandemic, right there, 2019, 2020. Mm -hmm. And also it was at just the moment, if you remember, that um, art as NFTs yep. was starting to become a real thing, right? Mm. And um, fast forward to what I'm sure will be the rest of our conversation, right? The uh, Alluvio as both a utility platform and also what became an application stack is now a full ecosystem, if you will, for Indeed. this next generation creator economy where publishers can publish and... Um, audience can purchase and own, mm -hmm. consume directly what publishers publish. And the ingredients of this, and I'm sure we'll get into this, um, allow this to happen at scale. And yeah. The Flash yeah. as a movie released by Warner Brothers under this new NFT window for the first time in history is the, I think, most significant example of this that has happened yet, right? So, and yeah. There's plenty to say about me as a person, but it's probably less interesting than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that oddly, oddly enough, you answered a lot. You you foreshadowed a lot of places we're going to go to for sure. <laughs> okay. But then you also kind of did actually tell us how sort of sort of how you got into to Web three, considering the company uh, Alluvio and like you know yeah. uh, the founding it. And I was going to ask like when Alluvio kind of came to be, but kind of makes sense. And in, I guess given that timeline going the NFT route made made sense. One of the things I was thinking about, so you talked about CDNs, um, and, I, and in my mind, and I'm sure you've heard this as you've talked to people and everyone's like, well, how does your content, how does your, how did the CDN technology um, differ from the other streamers? And you might, yeah. maybe you might go and say like, well, well, you know, this is a completely different thing. You know, we can have individuals putting things out there. It's not just, you know, contained within a Netflix. There's also Amazon tech sort of deal. differences, right? So yeah, and, and that's that's yeah. So that's what I want to know. And I didn't even know, I think Ryan and I were gonna start pretty high and be like, tell us a little, but now we're like, we're already here. We jumped straight <laughs> in. I was we were gonna be like, Do you own any NFTs, Michelle? <laughs> Uh, maybe that's the next question, but for now, I, I do own plenty of them. But um, oh, we're to them. to this uh, question, I think you're raising is sort of like, well, first of all, why why would you even bother to think of a yeah. decentralized protocol for content that is a blockchain? Like, why, right? Yeah. Technologically speaking, there's a few things that if you're sort of down in the weeds of content. 
over the internet that you sort of come up to as a brick wall. Okay. Mm. Um, one thing which is not so sexy, but it's huge is efficiency. Um, yes. The way that CDNs and the media stacks in front of them get video to people is incredibly wasteful. And okay. one of the most obvious ways to describe that um, was really put out in a, an academic paper by a very famous guy. Um, his name is Van Jacobson. He was actually one of the fathers of TCP. Oh, crazy. Okay. ECB, yeah. IP, ECB, protocol, IP right? protocols. One yeah. of the fathers, yeah. In his late, the very later parts of his career, he put out a paper and gave some talks on the fact that the way we're routing all this traffic around the internet for content is really wasteful. Why? Mm. Because we don't know what's in those streams and we end up sending basically the same streams over and over again. Uh, why? Oh, yeah. Because the way the internet thinks about content has nothing to do with what's in the bytes. It's just mm -hmm. byte propagation. And so there's this general like sort of whole area of challenge, which is the fact that if we really wanted to make content efficiently moved over the pipes once, for example, mm -hmm. and you could even extrapolate that to also be stored once, for example, right? Okay. Gotcha. We would need to kind of rethink how that distribution is um, addressed and routed. And there's, as a result, a whole area of thought called content native addressing and content native routing. So that's that's one sort of big deficit of traditional CDNs and this opportunity to do something new, right? Okay. Now there's another sort of big deficit area. If I could like say one more big brick wall. Yeah, yeah. Go, yeah. go ahead. to talk about real timeness. And real timeness is how fast and responsive applications can be. And um, unfortunately, the way video and interactive content comes over the internet today has many stop offs, meaning right. we stop here on a disk. And then we read the stuff up again. And then we stop here on a disk mm -hmm. and we read the stuff up again. Then we go through a bunch more um, you know, points in the internet. And then yep. we write, write the data down to a disk for storage. And then we go and load it back into memory and serve it out again, right? This kind yeah. of like stop off over and over again goes all the way from the source content to the consumer. And it involves many different uh, sometimes like not not just points, but even vendor systems, right? Gotcha. Okay. And, and the problem with that is if you're trying to do something that's really responsive in real time, uh, all of that is very much against the ease of doing that or the timeliness. So very right. low latency experiences, yeah. like low latency live video, have traditionally been very brute force over just the fire the packets internet. through just just Me, well by brute force um to to get reliability along with that right what um most systems have done is what i would call a very sort of um uh forced or um uh I'm trying to say this in a in, in a simple <laughs> way that'll make make sense to people, but yes. basically um, <laughs> bolted together or band aid based approaches that try to work around the limitations of all of those stop off points and low latency streaming as we know it today. Even some of the most advanced specs of it are very much riddled with this sort of thing. They're very complex. They require lots of changes along the CDNs and the origin servers. And then they have a lot of problematic byproducts and they still don't guarantee good low latency. Um, along with that, you've got things like um, interactive uh, metaverse style applications, like mm -hmm. the interactive experience that's in the flash. Those mm -hmm. are oftentimes rendered with something like a game engine, like a Unity or something yeah, yeah. like that. And then there are usually a lot of bytes that nowadays can serve efficiently into the browser, right? And right. there the software can load into the browser. But again, with sort of the traditional means of serving that stuff from by the time you have the source media on the cloud and you're trying to get through the CDN and get to the client, that too can be really slow and heavy. And you guys have seen this probably with a lot of metaverse experiences that perform really bad, right? Yeah. So there, that's a problem area mm -hmm. too. And then okay. 
Then you get into the economics. That's a whole nother area of problem area, which you guys are probably really interested in because that's why Web3 has really, you know, come into existence. And you can write down a whole set of barriers that exist in the media economy that have marked the way we do video today that, um, you know, should be overcome. And those two are motivators for why the content fabric protocol. Okay. A lot. Well, you hit so <laughs> many major points and I'm just like, yes, this, this, that, that, that. Okay. Economics, when you mentioned that and we didn't get into it, I was thinking, yes, how much, how does, how much does this cost us? And where are we getting, where are they and passing? And income, and then income to was, the was gonna, creative people. Right? right. I'm like, where are they passing those costs onto us in a fractional way is what I'm thinking. I'm like, holy crap. But then, and also I think one part I think that I didn't fully grasp. I mean, there's probably blocks that I didn't grasp, but like when you were talking about the brute forceness as as as, as a workaround to like kind of like get it, get things through when you want to stream with low latency. But um, either way, that was really interesting, and I think we're going to go some places because we do want to talk about the interactive uh, process of Flash and some of the other films that mm -hmm. are on the the marketplace over there. But maybe we can go back to Alluvio first. Sure, actually. Before let me we go back to Olivia, let me throw a fun little one. Question yeah, let's, out let's, there. let's do some breakups here. What, what NFTs do you own, Michelle? Oh, well, <laughs> you guys I'll are throw, I'll throw the softball. No, 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 don't worry. You, you want me to open uh, up my wallets? I'll show you all my stupid so, NFTs. <laughs> yeah, so the uh, actually, the very first one I bought is just a nice artistic JPEG. I honestly am afraid don't remember the creator, but it's my wallpaper to this day. Oh, on nice. my laptop. Nice. And um, the reason I kept it was because it was sort of, you know, like many people in this space, I, I have been involved, obviously I'm technical. I mean, you oh, listen to me talk, sure. right? <laughs> I know quite a lot about blockchains and blockchain security before I ever got an NFT. But what wow. the artistic side of the NFT did for me was that's when the glue came together. You could see mm -hmm. that the creative IP could finally mm -hmm. become manifested on the chain. Right. And this, of course, I mean, that's the number one thing we're all about at Alluvio. And the reason I'm saying that that NFT meant a lot to me is because it brought it all to life to me. That's that's why I started working extremely fast to make sure we had you know, tooling and stuff to be able to support lots and lots of tokenization on top of the, the lower layer of what we do. But to answer your question, that's the first one that I got. And then along the way, I have bought NFTs of projects that I'm either following or trying to learn from. And then I own a lot of them from uh, various clients projects where mm. I just pick up something that I think that I want to number one test and then also be able to keep as memorabilia over, over the years to see how this goes. So mm. I have, I have a range. Um, I must say that I know more about the Ethereum ecosystem than about the Solana ecosystem, but um, we do support ourselves um, tools for uh, cross chain auth. And I do a one Solana NFT myself from that, uh, uh, from you know, working that in that area. Yeah. And I, don't also, even, I don't even think I have a Solana. We're, I know, very interesting. Yeah, we're shills for, uh, we love Cardano. That's our, well, uh, that's our fun I, blockchain we like. I think the the most important thing on all this is the, the fact that you can actually, well, first of all, that the mechanism exists, but that you have the possibility to certify it anywhere that you want to. I mean, the more open the internet ecosystem of blockchains the better in my opinion mm -hmm. yeah indeed for sure um okay so before nfts um what, what yourself what did you see as the main benefit for blockchain was it the security of it was it more like just um the, tr the transfer of data on blockchains what well um so for me being such an internet nerd at heart i mean one thing i didn't tell you when you asked you about myself is my whole everybody has their growing up story right mm, when yeah. that moment where you realized who you wanted to be i mean or maybe you maybe people some people don't but i, yeah, I that, guess that happened uh, for me like last year so it's all, last good. Year. all good you know i've been i've been going for years i'm like i'm 35 now how do we do i got it okay how do i dismantle my life and figure out life this and and do yeah. this one thing and i'm yeah. sure i'm going to change as they yeah. sound sort of corny to put it that way but to the extent that happens to people the 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 moment of that for me was um 
actually, which of course you'll figure out how old I am uh, when I was uh, 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 graduating from college, the yeah. web the web browser was uh, becoming a thing, and it nice. uh, nice. cool. uh, gives you a good idea. And nope, nope. Um, all good. I personally fell in love with the fact that I mean, obviously, I studied engineering, physics, and and. Uh, just did all technical stuff. But at that point I realized that, you know, the whole world is going to change this way. And the yeah. internet is able to, I mean, to not only unlock communication, but make it possible for information to flow without bounds forever. And this is everything yeah. I want to be part of. And I will, I can't do anything else with my life. And nice. that it was actually the case. And the reason I, I'm sort of drawing this back to, um, where was I with blockchain before NFTs? Well, when I first learned about blockchain, once I started to get some intuition about it, and that did take a while, I will tell mm. you, because it's the ideas of it are very much bound up um, and probably not so, this isn't so good, but they're they're really bound up in the early cryptocurrencies, obviously Bitcoin. Yeah, and then yeah. even Ethereum has a heavy, uh, all the Ethereum justifications have a heavy uh, bent toward, um, you know, DeFi applications. Yeah. And it, it took me a bit to really extract from that how those principles could actually alter the internet in such significant ways. But once I realized this, then this became part of the rest of my life cause that mm. if I'm going to continue to try to make the internet move, if to realize its full potential for people, then I have to do this. Mm. And in fact, this is where the value of blockchain came for me and still is today. Um, I will add one more point that like many people who love the internet for the sake of it, it disturbs me to greatly when the internet is abused by monopoly. I oh, really man. detest that. And I think that it is uh, the power of technology to keep that force moving forward to better innovation is where I like to put my frustration. Oh, right? I really like that. I <laughs> Sir Tim Berners-Lee wanted built the internet. Uh, and one of the things he, he was thinking about accessibility in its design, you know, and Totally. In, in another life that I have, I'm very, very big on accessibility and mm -hmm. the technologies. And that's that's really at the core. One of the things that he was doing that for was actually in a he was in a conference online and I was uh, mm -hmm. attending that it was really, really cool. I was He's like, well, older than I am. At least somebody yeah, is. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, it's, it's really interesting. I, I, I was actually when you were just mentioning um, Van, I was actually thinking, you know, you're like I was in graduate school with Netscape or uh, well, whatever browser. Yeah. You didn't name the browser, but I was thinking it's okay, Michelle. Like I was in third year of university, and one of my buddies was like, "Yo, have you seen this like Facebook thing?" And I was like, "Why would I care?" I was in I will never forget. I was in the library, and I was like, "No, I know about it. I don't care." He's like, "I'm talking to chicks in Texas," <laughs> and I was just like. So what? Are you going to Texas? That's funny. Yeah. I do remember Facebook because I remember everyone's you know? like, oh, you need a university ID to log yeah. in. I was to like, log in. I'm, I'm, I didn't go to anywhere. So I, I finished high school. That was, was where I went. You so. know, it was it was so interesting. And I was like, I don't care. I'm doing a applied geography degree. I don't give a crap about chicks in Texas. <laughs> I'll never forget that. And then like years later, I was just like, huh. <laughs> Little did you know. Yeah, yeah. Right? Either, Little either did way. you know. Either way, I, uh, I, I equally remember when Twitter started. I equally remember when Google was just getting mm. its first use. And um, right. I mean, the, and, you know, we see this phenomenon with chat GPT, like yeah. the first time it really comes out and people are like, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I, I this is something I do not only believe in, I know is true that you really can fix add new dimensions and fix what has been the constraints of the present through these kinds of tipping point technologies in the internet. And if they're applied right, meaning that in, frankly, there's a lot of, uh, mm. you know, not only no, skill yeah. and the luck around that part, but if they're applied right, then, I mean, you create whole new eras and we're definitely in need of that with the way that, I think content is such a valuable currency, but it has been so maligned in mm. basically taking advantage of 
well, the content itself and then also the audience. Yeah. And, and, and um, just vying for attention for the yeah, specific. Yes. And it's like, there's more than that we could be doing with this, you know? Yes. And if and you we are, really but... go deep and you look at the content industry, which is really struggling right now, mm. um, it has been bought out by the large internet platforms, which use the content mm. basically as a, a, a gateway to essentially achieve their primary revenues. Yeah, and ad revenue. It, yeah. it right. will, and and also if you think about many of the platforms and um, I mean, think about Apple, they use content to sell us devices. Yeah, Amazon uses the content to sell us Prime, for example. Mm. Yeah. And um, out of the, the, the big, you know, sort of top group, uh, most of the content economy is uh, controlled. Of course, YouTube, in the case of YouTube or TikTok, it's ads, but it's controlled by a very small segment of people. And if you're a publisher of content or you're a consumer of content, you're just a cog in that wheel. Um, also, at the same time, content's never been more influential in terms of how society communicates, interacts, learns, entertains, et cetera. And so... The argument is that, you know, if we don't use this technology opportunity to mm -hmm. innovate a different economic situation, meaning bring out some fundamentally different efficiencies, um, we're going to be can ever stuck in the sort of position that we're presently in. And um, right. I think people feel that ever more because for one, content publishers are having a harder and harder time turning a profit. You've seen yeah. that both small and big and yeah. it, and the big ones other than the big, big guys, right? Um, are It's not easy, right? There's a mm -hmm. lot of lost profitability. And then for independence, right? Or even folks who have turned to influence making, they have no control at all, right? Yeah. They make money, but it's completely subject to the platforms. Yeah, and then look the at platform. the- and then in the audience, most consumption is forced to be passive and ads driven. Mm. It's also one in which your your data obviously is not yours. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the content environment that you have to function in is one that's completely constructed around those traditional economics, right? And uh, that's why I think, you know, kind of going to your point on um uh, uh, you originally asked me about, you know, where was I with blockchain bef even before NFTs? Right. It was really thinking about its ability, if married with content at scale, to shift this, right? Ooh. Whoa, Michelle, that was... <laughs> yeah. I mean, she, that was she too knows, big? No, no, no. She knows what she's talking about, but it's just so well packaged that then at the end she just brings it home. So she's like, so that's why <laughs> yeah. I, uh, that's why Alluvio exists because content yeah. married with the it's... blockchain technology and the decentralization of it. It's like you first of all, I was thinking as I'm as you're talking, I was like, I don't think I've ever spent this much time interacting with someone for such a long time in a direct way that's so knowledgeable, but that actually gets blockchain on a mm -hmm. technology level. But then also on on the conceptual, uh, and just to say lazy words, freedom level, you know, and it's like yeah. I almost even wanted to say as you were as we were kind of talking, but like, and you talked about the whole, you know, like the content we're being fee uh, fed, it's passive, it's this algorithm that's feeding it to us. Like I make sure that on YouTube where I consume a lot of my content. I don't click what's suggested. I'm always trying to search and go and do my own thing. It doesn't fucking matter. It's, but, but I'm trying, you know, and it's just like, I just feel like the data is not mine. I'm serving it up to them. I'm passively watching everything while they take ad, while they serve me up the, the contents, the prop for the ad revenue and whatever else they want to do. Uh, if I wanted to go on YouTube and make some gains, the con the platform's not mine. And it's just like, uh, I'm just. Giving, what alternative giving, do you have though, really? I mean, and I, I think the that's alternative the is point. go outside and fly a kite. Yeah. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Go so, touch grass. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, that. no, but I, I, don't I, I don't know. I, I mean, and that's I think that's really where you know the 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 tech has to step in, right? How could mm. we expect all of us as humans to do something different if there really isn't a viable alternative? And right. viable, I mean, if you, I mean, 
okay, so you brought up um, X. Uh, uh, let's talk about yeah. a good thing about Elon, right? Oh, oh um, Tesla, I actually right? like Elon. I don't know <laughs> yeah. him, but he's yes. done cool things, but, right? So I think most people can accept that Tesla's brought a lot of good, right? Yeah. And uh, if you think about the situation with the electric cars, before Tesla, cars were so dopey. Like no, yeah. no real people would drive electric yeah. cars, and yeah. and um, it, it for so many reasons, right? Function, yeah. uh, scale, function, scale, affordability, um, network, uh, you know, look, yeah. everything, right? Yeah. And um, I think I always like to think about that example. Because without that, how, how could we ever even start to make a dent in converting driving to electric cars? Mm -hmm. And that, that's yeah. the part where I think the technology really has to be there. There has to be a product that is actually compelling enough that people can then have that alternative, like you said. Otherwise, I mean, it. how could you expect us to do our content any other way, right? Mm -hmm. And um, just kind of getting back to, you know, what brought us all here together. I mean, I think that this is what we're essentially trying to do is to get to a point where there's a really viable alternative for being able to publish your media in a way that's direct to your, to your audience. Right. Right. Good point. Okay. I love it. Brian, how that, are you uh, feeling? <laughs> I have to list, go back and listen to this a couple of times. Yeah. I, I love it. So, uh, so knowledgeable and technical it's 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 impressive it's um good. i guess where should we go i guess got, what you, you had no you had. i was just gonna say I'll, I'll throw the softball again and just say like uh, what is alluvio itself is it a is it a blockchain oh. i know you said it's a protocol but what exactly is it a blockchain is it? yeah yeah well, yeah talk about that yeah. you, man you're just gonna get another technical answer from me i'm so sorry okay, but it is a it's actually a full stack evm chain too and um, we took a fourth fork of ethereum and built it into the protocol and people might go well why would they do that why didn't you just make it a layer two on top of a mainnet or something and mm. when you really think a little bit more about the problem we're trying to solve it's that in order for you to have this direct relationship between you and somebody else on chain, right? The content itself has to have its governance on the chain, meaning mm. you got to be able to say what it is, like um, its fingerprint on yeah. the chain. You've got to know if that fingerprint changes. So that's got to like go through the chain and you've got to be able to pass ownership really through the chain. And with content, the passing of ownership is controlled through encryption and authorization, mm -hmm. meaning mm -hmm. otherwise it's not. And, and a lot of people might ask me, why, why can't we just use IPFS? Well, a couple of things. I mean, first of all, IPFS is just static byte storage. It doesn't do anything actively like stream or whatnot. Mm -hmm. but, but even if you layer it on that streaming, I mean, there's the second problem, which is that the actual custody of the bytes, right? Right. It isn't really tied to any on chainness, and what I mean right, is, is you can just go and get them. And the fact that you can, uh, you know, first of all, they're often not encrypted. Mm -hmm. The fact that you could decrypt them, you know, uh, if they were encrypted, how did you get the keys to decrypt them in the first right. place? And then finally, um, beyond just being able to decrypt them, under what circumstances should you be able to decrypt them? And if you want to get really down into blockchain goo, I don't mm -hmm. know how else to put it, right? <laughs> if you were to like be Vitalik, as mm -hmm. smart as he is, yeah. and you were to write the yellow paper on this, which I mean, it's kind of the point of the content fabric protocol in its small space, right? Mm -hmm. You realize that you need to make the contents life cycle on the blockchain. And right. that is why there is a full stack blockchain that is part of the protocol and by life cycle you could think of publishing the content mm -hmm. you can think of transferring ownership of it changing the version of it in the publishing and also getting access to it or something that's derived from it because okay. streaming is often derived from source material at least right. it is the way we do things this is interesting here you've touched on a lot of things here we're going to get i like that you said where the life cycle end. Ryan and I were actually talking mm -hmm. about that earlier on when we were thinking, okay, when we were applying the life cycle of the content to, because we were thinking in the more traditional movie side of things of like royalties and kickbacks and that, where does the yeah. life cycle end? Like we, yeah. and, and you know what, we have to remember to get into this about our purchasing experiences with, because obviously mm -hmm. we're, we're fans. Like Ryan didn't hop in because he was like, we got to talk to Michelle Munson. He hopped in because mm -hmm. it was like Devon. 
we love film we love blockchain it's married here go buy some go buy a freaking movie you love right so yeah. and we did it different ways on purpose because that's that's how we test things you know yeah but um no that's that's interesting so maybe we can talk content fabric pipeline uh, we 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 read the pipe the, the white the white paper. i tried to read yeah. the and then i started reading ryan it. called me he's like are you reading this shit <laughs> he's yeah, like, this i was is like deep. i'm gonna i'm gonna ask michelle to explain it to me like i'm a toddler <laughs> explain it stay, like i'm fine. Stay in school kids <laughs> but okay so as we look at this right we're gonna we're gonna go the image here that i know you've looked at a million yeah. times yeah, and this line. yeah so this is interesting and it, it makes sense and i i think one of the things i was thinking about is the contract here is the that's the that's the, the that's um, the governance of the uh, of the content and what's being served to you. That's your smart contract here, and that at that point of security yeah, here, yes, before uh, the rendering is in the last part of yeah, yes. But the part of this that I'll appeal to everybody who's involved with blockchain knows yeah, that at, sure. at the core of a real blockchain, there's quite a lot of complexity. I mean, course, after yeah, all, yeah. you got to be able to settle a legitimate consensus. You've got mm. a, an infinitely scaling system that has to always behave right, even as it gets ever bigger, right? Yeah. And then you also have the challenges of just doing the mechanics of it all, right? It's an yeah. internet network and it has crypto advanced cryptography and all of that in it, right? So if you can accept that the content fabric as a blockchain protocol has all of that complexity, plus it's right. also a decentralized content protocol and you got to like get stuff stored in the right places and served out, right? You can then start to say, okay, that's what's inside this black box, right? Now, turns out the black box is a decentralized thing. Mm -hmm. And um, you can think of the software and that pipeline is, first of all, the same software runs on every node. That makes it very simple in certain ways. And then that pipeline is just what happens. So if gotcha. I client go to this node because I got pointed there, mm -hmm. right? To ask for something, then that pipeline kicks in to give me what I asked for. Yeah. It's the really pipeline is is multiple and infinitely expanded. Well, infinitely. That's right. Know, infinitely and expanded to serve the, the request. That's right. That's I'm sure exactly the image right. has three renders, but like, it's not that. It's a pipeline. No. And pipeline and and really it can serve in any place around yep. which means any position in the global mm -hmm. internet where you might be as a client it also means for any kind of media output not only just serving you streaming content but also like images or data for example right. files whatever um music whatever uh audio um and then the other thing that's also kind of a variable there in that pipeline that's um, pretty fantastic is that you see that there are these chunks that are all around the network. Those chunks of data, that's a pretty well-known kind of approach to building a decentralized system, but those chunks of data aren't just static media, they're also code. And one of the things that makes the protocol special and much like other types of advanced blockchain networks is the fact that the code operates on the binary parts and on the data parts when you request it. So it's programmable, right? Yeah. Just like things like the Ethereum EVM are programmable. Yes. Yeah. Which right? means you can do anything because it's a virtual machine. Sorry. Yes, Sorry. that's right. And yeah. that part is a full invention from us. Uh, okay. And doing that for content is something that, I mean, obviously we inspired some of the ideas from programmable blockchains for things mm -hmm. like DeFi um, and just contracts in general, right? Um, right? But the idea of that machinery that you see bringing together these bits that are media with the code bits that um, are active with data and having those execute and spit something out like a content computer, like you said, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Devin and Ryan is really, um, that's that, its invention. That and, tells me you're- And it, it, it oh, sorry, works as a blockchain when it's doing that, right? And it, yeah. you guys, I think also your listeners would appreciate that the fact it works as a blockchain, one, it it makes it extensible in many ways. It right. also gives it certain certifiability. You know, if you're really following blockchain semantics and cryptography, then the behaviors it has are deterministic, right? right. Um, and one of the important things for content is it's self-verifying. 
meaning you know that the content you're getting out, even if it's generated, is certifiable. It's what the publisher expected you to get for that offering, right? That's a big deal. And it's it's authorized. And it's a big deal because that means you're thinking far ahead to be able to support any type of content, really. I think what we're seeing, what Michelle's saying, so listeners, we have a lot of listeners. We also have some first time listeners, I'm sure. Um, They're They're like, what? non fungible jazz is not always like this, but we freaking love when it is. Um, I love, yeah. Yeah, there it means that uh, there's a, there's a lot of capability here, and and what Alluvio and what Michelle is kind of uh, the vision means that they're probably thinking far out to be able to support a lot. Okay, next question. <laughs> we're, we're moving. On. Part of me is like, where do we go? You know, um, because there's questions that I want to ask, but then I'm like, you know, we have to come up and breathe at times. You know, like so. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna All say. Right. I mean, maybe okay. more like why 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 even do this? I mean, like that's one of and, my questions. And- but yeah. maybe we can talk about um what's your favorite food? What's your go to oh meal? Right. Oh. I'm throwing it, I'm throwing a wrench in all of it. Right. What's oh. your go-to meal? Like you guys, I really like to eat. And because I, I work all the time, I always have food and whatnot. And <laughs> yes. I, I like I like everything. I'm I live in the Bay Area, like oh, nice. so the food around here is great. And uh I mean there's pretty much uh nothing I don't like. I would say that. Uh, never go wrong with sushi. Mm, I think that's right. really okay. fabulous. And uh, I would say that in Berkeley, jeez, oh, there's so much good food. <laughs> um, well, you know, we have many. We, we have a variety of of famous places that range from Zachary's, uh, Chicago deep deep dish pizza, Ooh, very nice. traditional, um, all the way to the most uh, like. Uh, upscale kind of thing, like Alice Waters, sort of like fancy places to, you know, just a good old Everett and Jones barbecue out of Oakland. They're all great. Uh, I can't mean, go wrong with barbecue. I like all this stuff, yeah. right? So, and uh, I work, um, I work a lot, like most people in the industry, and yeah. I enjoy it. So, being able to share that community with the people in my team. It's really fun. Um, by the way, you didn't ask me this about myself. I happen to have two kids. I'm married and uh, I like to spend some time with those two kids also. So <laughs> they, they do nice. think I'm a very strange mom that I do all of this stuff in blockchain, but they're learning. So there you go. <laughs> well, I got I got three myself. My 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 oldest is 17 and then I got a seven and a three year old. So I'm trying yeah. to I'm like, I keep pushing to the 17 year old. I'm like, you listen to the podcast. Well, she I'm like, is. She's our producer. Wow, she's our initial. She's our initial producer. She was the I, original. <laughs> the original until she got distracted by literally everything. But it's all right. Yeah. She's still she's still on the books. She 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 got some oh. of our numbers. We had some of her her classmates at school were like, "Is this your dad?" Is this your they, dad? She actually had me do because of COVID. I ended up doing a whole like presentation in her class on uh, like Zoom or something, talking about <laughs> NFTs and like efficiency with energy and yeah. Ethereum oh, yeah, and all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, by the way, what do you think the her generation understands about NFTs, and what do they think about it? And I where think this is all going. Yeah, it's interesting because a lot of like I noticed with my seven year old, he doesn't like watch TV. He's like mm-hmm. Netflix, YouTube, like all the yeah. streaming sites. Like he doesn't care about traditional TV at all. Mm-hmm. And if he is watching it, it's like the older stuff on streaming services. I'm like, yeah. you know, this was on TV two years ago, but he's he's just catching up to it now. Her mm-hmm. generation is, I don't know, because for me, for her, she just thinks, oh, NFTs are stupid. That's something dad does. And But I guess I should really start, like, getting to the tech side of it and be like, this is what um, blockchain is actually about. But I, th- I don't I know. Think, what do you think, Devon? Well, I think so. I've seen, you know, I've spent time with your family and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, um, but And it's interesting because... I've seen that side of things. And when with my sister, I have younger sisters and I've seen with them and their friends, what I'm seeing is that we have the benefit of existing. I mean, this is great. We kind of alluded to this before existing in the analog, you know, AOL CDs. (laughs) Yeah. AOL CDs. You know, if you said you were going to meet up, you had to meet up because you only had a house phone. And we were able to see that and the progression of technology and get to the place where, you know, my full unfolds in half, you know, and we can witness that progression and we've seen 
we might not understand technology, but those of us that are inclined can appreciate it to a sense. And some of my younger sisters and some of the younger individuals that I deal with um, in other professions, they are unfortunately completely blind to the infrastructure that powers or delivers much of what they consume. There's no understanding of, of, yeah. of anything. I'm like, oh man, you know, like uh, Google Pixel switched from uh, the, the the Intel or whatever. So Snapdragon, Dragon, Dragon chips, and they're making chips powered by Samsung. And they're and be like, like, and I'm like, but that changes the quality of the phone you use. It's changing your phone. You don't understand these things are happening, and it's not hard to know that. But they don't care because it's content. It's um, it's just content, 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 notoriety. How can I get that life? And I find that unfortunately the masses are probably that's why it goes back to earlier on when we were just like, we are getting this passive consumption of content. I just, I feel like a lot of young people, if they're not technical, they're not understanding of that. And then most of the time we understand that there's institutional control in many different ways, but they're more so concerned about censorship. And here in Canada, um, the older individuals uh, are like, okay, well, what am I going to do about taxes and being able to afford a home? Mm -hmm. It seems to be, what people you know censorship equality home jobs like I, I feel like technology there's those that know it those that are inclined to it and go there um i haven't seen that i think there was like i actually there's a previous partner of mine that was from the art world and was just dis- disillusioned with the money she was making and what she was doing and because she you know somehow on her own and with the influences she went to a boot camp and then moved into tech but like Mm -hmm. i talked to a lot of different people in a lot of different ways and that's not what everyone's doing we're seeing it pushed out there but you have to have some sort of inclination to believe that you can do it and i'm just yeah yeah i wanted to say something about you struck on a point that i think is everywhere this and youth, which is this, you know, sort of drunkenness for notoriety, right? Yeah. And that's obviously yeah. been inbred into all of us by the way that social media works. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, you can run all kinds of like statement, all kinds of analysis of what mm. that does does to people, or you can just look at society and, and see what it does to people, right? But one of the interesting, it's, it's a theory, and I think also held in practice uh, about, you know, direct publishing and ownership by fans um, into content support that's direct is um, that we could start to, you know, give people real satisfaction for the work that they create on multiple levels. One, first of all, they can have true fans. And secondly, they could also, you know, with the right efficiencies, that's why I was talking about that as kind of the first point, they could also make a living with a smaller group of true fans. Yeah, you only need um, a know, thousand. Exactly, as <laughs> yeah. it's always said. But yeah. when, when you really um, start to think about that, then you might be able to really shift what um, people to, you know, a, a gratifying position that comes from uh, being able to produce work that your true fans truly value and then being able to grow that cycle. Um, This is something that I noticed with um, uh, NFTs um, in the very beginning and really propelled me forward in this idea of uh, NFT authorized media or blockchain media, because it is a a way that you can really facilitate that kind of, of cycle to happen between the people that are true fans and their publishers. Um, And then also uh, I wanted to add to that. I think you can also grow a monetization. Now it could also go wrong. Like the, you know, social media advertising has gone wrong, but you Mm -hmm. could grow a monetization off of that on the basis that that fan relationship is really one of the most valuable because the people that are engaged there are really engaged. And if you're thinking from the standpoint of not just selling the media, but even a new type of advertising, that gives a really precise relationship for the advertiser or or target person for the advertiser to focus on. And maybe it's a win-win all around and gets us basically out of this, you know, notoriety driven kind of world that we're presently in. 
and good point. And makes makes me wonder if you're thinking here um, about the tendency with Olivio and uh, that's, I mean, you you're, you can explain it better than I do. Why would I try to explain yeah. it? But maybe you can tell <laughs> us a little about that yeah. and some of the artists like Rita Ora and whatnot yeah, that we've absolutely. been able to connect I mean, with. Yeah. Um, what's, because just in case you're listening, Olivio does a ton and we've talked about like, I don't know, 20% of it. <laughs> yeah, for, well, tell, I definitely uh, have a question about the whole Dolly Parton. Yeah, tell us about oh, the, for maybe sure. some of the tenants, a big some of the content partners yeah. And, yeah. and how that whole part of those the are works. those are yeah. yeah yeah those are all examples of users there uh, of the stack that sits on top of this low level content fabric we've been talking right. about and that's a software stack that allows you to publish your content um to stand it up as live streams to have drop events um, to mm-hmm. have live events to also have published media movie releases albums what have you oh, and nice. then yeah you can and- do live streams Absolutely. Oh, and that's, that's exactly oh. what Dolly did. And the South Michelle, by Southwest concert. This. Yeah, it was it was actually it, I was right there. I uh helped Amazing. to operate it. But um because the fabric gives you the ability to publish the stream and have it direct to the consumer, and then we have an app stack that allows for you to have um, you know, advertise with a you know, a, a web page, a brandable marketplace, and um, a media wallet, and end end gotcha. experience. You can then host a live streaming event with uh, even with blockchain ticketing, for example. Yeah. Um, a, and okay. that show at Austin City Limits during South oh, by cool. Southwest was all live streamed on our platform that way. So it's is that the, the powered by Alluvio Web three content experience? Is that absolutely? That's got exactly it. what okay. that I was is. like. Yeah. That makes sense, Ryan. I was like, yeah. that's yeah. what's going so, on there. With the, right. the live stream, is it just a stream or can people, do you have it where it's interactive, where people could chat as well? Or is it oh, just yes. streaming? Well, um, so we, because that's an application platform, there is a yeah. chat feature built into that. And you probably saw when we did concerts like Rita Ora and the Black Eyed Peas that mm. those all had an interactive chat um, as wow. the side panel around that. Yeah, yeah. One thing I, I think is really interesting about this is that that whole experience is all just part of an application suite. It's part of also the same application suite for releasing movie bundles. And we're now getting into um, free and ad supported channels for things like sports, for example. Interesting. Okay. Um, and then the wallet, right? The media wallet is yeah. the user experience side of that. And um, that uh, is both your sign on and also mm-hmm. your collection, if right. you will, of your viewing experience. And the beauty of the media wallet is it's compatible with all of that. Okay. This is this wow. is good. The rare we're at a good point right here. That was cool. You could totally recognize you opened a bunch of you kind of there was like a bunch of light bulbs that went off for us as we were like <laughs> scouring and putting together. And we're like, this is this, right? That was cool. Okay. For, right now I'm thinking we should go, Ryan. I'm thinking one part of me wants to talk wallet. Let's talk about WB and how that partnership happened. Mm-hmm. And because yeah. some of the listeners probably don't even know that that's where Ryan, how we got into that's this. That's how we met. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. really what happened. So Ryan, how about you walk us through what were you trying to do? What happened here? What do they offer here? I guess. I don't know. Like, uh, well, are you talking about like when I saw the, the, yeah, the flash, like, like, just just the flash like what that process was like maybe we could go through your buying process because that's Trucker. we did different yeah. ones right okay so well maybe so, you can tell us how the one yeah. other partnership happened then we'll tell you about our buying experience and give yeah. you some back how about that oh absolutely yeah. okay we'll yeah, do that it's all very good so um movie burst uh, is a Warner Brothers property hosted on the um, Alluvio platform. And uh, gotcha. this came uh, really as an, uh, it was an original idea from WB uh, that came out of, I think it originated with a talk they heard me give at a technical conference about cool. using NFTs to authorize media um, on the content fabric and being able to expand that beyond just simple collectibles to full um, long form media mm-hmm. experiences like like full length film, television, content, yeah. you name it. Um, and from that, we started to talk a little bit. And um, one day they said, you know, what if we were to mint a bundle of content uh, in, including a feature film, much like our extended editions used to be in the mm-hmm. days of Blu-rays and DVDs um, okay. as a single NFT. And of course, by that point, I mean, I had sort of 
dreamed of something like this, yeah. uh, you yeah. know, being a, an idea from one of the studios and, and obviously one thing led to another. And we brought out Lord of the Rings as this new web three um, living movie experience. As no our big first deal. Drop. Just went with the, one of the best trilogies of all time. Like just like, <laughs> courtesy of them and uh i want to stress one thing unlike many nft projects we're not a, a company licensing this ip and then remaking some nft content mm -hmm. instead we're platform that warner brothers uses to distribute it under right. as a nft bundle and under this window of authorization mm -hmm. and capabilities that we talked about so your back-end support it's, platform it's for them right to do that's exactly right gotcha. and um, i think that's really important to what we've been talking about because this is uh, not only you know beneficial to the consumer, it's also beneficial to the publisher because they yeah. get that direct relationship we've been talking about and also, um, you know, the benefits and the returns from that. And um, long story short, we released um, Lord of the Rings uh, in October, and that was uh, both with the movie, a full 3D interactive experience, with uh, which is also a story in itself. Those actually have hotspots that are not only authorized by virtue of owning the required, you know, base NFT, they also play different media objects from the fabric. So through the experience, you can uncover AR objects, you can uncover, watch different bonus footage. Um, you can also uh, open up large image galleries and whatnot. And um, it's very, um, not only cool, but it's also very <laughs> novel. Right. And I, yeah. I think that that's what um, started to, first of all, we thought this was possible and that we could do it in the way we um, en envisioned um, the production of those interactive experiences. Now there have been three movies has each mm -hmm. been done by a different company working in partnership with Warner brothers. And then also oh, the fabric with the same kind of uh, hotspot um, kind of capability where um the fabric is providing support for that. And uh, it turned out to be something that fans really liked. And uh, they decided to go from Lord of the Rings to a uh, slate for 2023. Um, in 2023, they've so far released Superman. Yeah. And then... Sold um, out, by it, the way, everyone. Uh, yeah, it, yeah it, it, it's quite a uh, qu quite a, um, uh, a, a well-received uh, drop as well. Uh, and they had with the the latest release a, a pretty bold notion um which we can talk about and this i think is really what's significant for the future um they decided to put the nft window in the global digital release window and what i mean is mm. that um the flash is available um to nft owners to watch in the minted experience as you guys have seen um unlocking in accordance with the digital release window for all of the traditional streaming platforms, okay. like for example, Apple yeah. TV. And um, I will tell you also that the windowing of that, as it's called, or the you know authorization of that, all comes from the same you know source object on the content fabric, and it's done through um, the blockchain governance and policies that I mentioned to you um, hmm. earlier. So this is a sort of first time that a new release feature film has ever been released this way and distributed on the blockchain. And then what's probably even more important on the more business side is that the authorization control is actually um, um, in, in literally encoded through um, the blockchain ownership and identity of the content. Okay, I have a couple questions and I could be wrong on this. Well, first of all, I totally want to talk a little bit more about that experience because Ryan and I, he got the flash, I did Lord mm -hmm. of the Rings, but I guess my question first, and I could have gotten this wrong. Are you saying that the, um, the release, you're serving up all the windows for all of where the flash is being shown digitally as well as no no just just, 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 yeah, just yeah, for all. the for the okay, nft okay, holders okay, okay, for right, the right, nft okay. holders absolutely yes, that could that's be right. that's so one of the things when we talk about traditional nft collections because we'll have like people that just have released collections and we always get into like key questions about collections and i don't know if you have all those details but like 
you know, when Ryan and I were going through and I was like, well, I'm buying the Lord of the Rings, you know, like definitely big, huge fan of the franchise, love the films. And I was like, we'll start here with the fellowship. Um, there are, it's pretty cool. Everyone as you're, you go through and you can, you can, you I bought off like the listing, the marketplace, I guess you would say. You of, off secondary. Of, of secondary sec- marketplace. Second- yeah. Oh yeah. I can say, okay. I can say that. Yeah. Like, secondary mm-hmm. marketplace. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think I could have probably ended up sitting here scrolling around for hours, looking at all the different combinations of, cause I don't really know all of the interactive elements that are included with the mm-hmm. release. You know, some of them are like, Oh, well you have, um, the Mines of Moria um, e- extended okay. stuff. You have galleries from I have the Shire edition. Then there's some of the this there's rarity to this, and it's like so you know. There's oh, a, okay. I didn't. Even, you know what? Now that you're saying that's, that, yeah, I, I that's forgot what, about that. There's that's what I was Shire, telling you about. The Shire is common. Riven's Tale yeah. is uncommon. Mines but then more, in yeah. them, because you have like there's the like so I did the purchase, and one of the things that was really interesting is like we often talk about the barrier in does it Ryan is Ryan always says, does it pass the mom test? Well, clearly not Michelle is the mom because Michelle would just make yeah, a company yeah, yeah. and build the she entire just ecosystem. The blockchain and takes yeah. it. <laughs> and she'd be like, does it pass the mom's mom test? And Michelle's like, I don't know. Like no, she's going through any mom test ever, but could my mom do this? You know, and hundred percent, the barrier is like, you know, does, is my mom going to go and open up a MetaMask wallet and load in some, some go transfer her fiat to to like whatever in Coinbase and then transfer that over and then buy this with ETH or Sol or whatever. F no, she's not doing that. But nope. um, there's a credit card purchase option, you know, which was pretty cool. You can connect your MetaMask and go that way, yep. or uh, you can go the Alluvio wallet, purchase through credit card, and I guess it goes through your email, and you've got a wallet on the back end, I suppose. But really, yeah, it's an wall. actual, might, it's a full wallet. I actually. might not it's even care. I just, the wallet yeah. just watching it through the site, which is that's right. That's like super important. So, good job, and non fungible guys. Uh, uh, I I, I approve, it. Michelle. No big deal. Uh, good work. Keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> but also, you know, um, the on the site, you you can see all the different properties that that are attached to it you're, you're seeing everything but the token url media url image url which is just stuff of where it's located but it's really interesting to see all the different rarity and you're not gonna get you know you can buy the most basic thing but you can also buy the more rare version like they have you listings here. unlock more yeah the top is a ten thousand dollar lord of the rings edition and i bought one that was you know like 50 bucks or whatever i bought you know so it's really you really get the aspect of for the degenerates that want yes. to want to get in there and, yeah. and, that, that was and live me. that life. I yeah. just connected MetaMask. I was like, "What am I buying?" Yeah, you're like, so Let's go. I actually ended up buying the Lord, the Fellowship of the Ring as well because mm-hmm. I was just like, I got to get in there and I want to see what it's about. So mm-hmm. I think I went secondary as a, as well and just grabbed a common mm-hmm. just to, to get mm-hmm. it in in my wallet. But um, and then what happened? So I ended up. I was like, I have to get the flash. I knew I was going to get the flash, but then I was in the Alluvio uh, discord and, or or somewhere on the website. And I saw something Mm -hmm. about early access was happening because it was getting released, I think on the Thursday, but at midnight on Wednesday or something, it was get. So I was like, okay, I'm going around. And I think who's the support MCM in your discord. MCM was very helpful. Helping me get the early access, sending out the support. Cause I guess you'd sent it to anybody that had bought dc nfts there was some order did that yes yeah. they gave early access to all the dc nft oh, holders right. which is a, another um I'll, I'll i'll mention that also some of those early access mechanisms um like those early access codes those also actually redeem on chain too so yeah. oh do they Absolutely. yeah i do oh, yes I didn't even, that's really awesome cool. that's so cool. Yeah, so I was I was just like scrambling to get the early access because I was like, oh, this thing could possibly sell out. I gotta get. I want to get mm-hmm. that. So I ended up going for the the. It was a premiere edition of the Flash, mm-hmm. um, and unfortunately, I didn't get the legendary uh, the legendary one. I got the the epic one still, so I was okay. I'm, I'm okay. There's flashes there, but uh, it was such an easy process. It was literally like mm-hmm. I just signed into MetaMask, boom, credit card purchase, and. I had in my wallet and I could walk. I've actually left the web three experience. I haven't touched it yet because I want to do it with the, with my son 
and uh, have him go around and unlock all the different content and all that mm-hmm. stuff. So and I the interactive experience. Yeah, yes. I haven't delved into it. I know I did do it for Lord of the Rings. And I have to say, I like the experience because it's kind of, it reminds me obviously of old school DVD features. When you first, mm-hmm. I remember, I'm trying to think of the first movie I ever saw on DVD. And I was like, what the hell is going on? Like yeah, yeah, settings, yeah. special stuff, feature. Yeah, like yeah. there was so much to it. And that's what I, I felt like with the. I'm honestly so happy about that because I don't have the Lord of the Rings on DVD and I don't have a DVD player anymore, you know, and I've yeah. actually nobody the, does. Yeah. No. This extended content. I don't want to have to go. I mean, you can go and search on YouTube for it, but like it's here, you know, I get this everything. extended cut and I was just scrolling through and sure. I don't have everything unlocked, which you you, you guys have definitely appealed to the G gen part because you, they show it at the, at the bottom and you're like, okay, I can watch the orchestra do their thing, but I'm like, Oh, I want to watch this or that. But it's like, I know that I own this, you know, I own this. And it's in my wallet and we care about that. You know, it's um, yeah, really, really cool. Big, big fan of this whole setup. I think, I think Ryan, you told me, uh, did you try it on Apple TV also? We yes, had, I did. We I wanted, the media right. wallet That's what TV I wanted to OS, talk about too. Right? Yeah, How so does that work? It was awesome, uh, actually. Uh, go ahead. You could yeah. talk about I, it. You, it's better to hear from someone who used it. Well, but... I, I, Ryan, I was blown away when you told me this. I was like, no effing way. Like well, for me, I have Fire TV because mm-hmm. my um, TV provider. I don't like buying up all these boxes for all this TV, so I use yeah, yeah. Fire Sticks with the mm-hmm. apps on it. And I was like, "Oh, there's no app for Alluvio on this." And I was like, "Well, how the hell?" And then I saw the Apple TV, and I was like, ah, "I know I got one kicking around." So mm-hmm. I downloaded it, and the fact that I was very nervous because I was like, "Well, how the hell?" Because I didn't sign up with the uh, email. So I was like, well, how am I going to sign into my MetaMask on an Apple TV? Because mm-hmm. Apple, like, it just didn't compute. So the way you guys did it was um, you click the option for MetaMask, and then I open up my MetaMask and use, like, you know, when you want to, I want to send code. some money yeah, yeah. to you, I yeah. scan the QR code of your address. So basically, I just scan the QR code on my screen, and it, I had to from yourself. I, I think I signed the con. I think I had to sign the authorization if I'm not correct. And yeah, then exactly. boom, I was in the Alluvio app and yeah, my that's flash, great. my flash and Lord of the Rings was right there. And you can even do, I'm pretty sure I was able to do all the web experiences right on the that's Apple right. TV itself. Yeah. That's so even click, oh, sorry, click into wa- yeah, I was just going to say, and then you can click in and watch in 4k right there on your TV. Oh, it was, and and then, it was no, yeah. no buffer. Not like no, like, like you said, the only I do have one feedback. Oh yeah, the let's hear it. Gonna take I it. <laughs> I, I, have, I have it too. So you go the first. The only Ryan. problem I, I had it. was at one point we were like an hour and a half into the movie, and I had to pause it because my son had to go upstairs. I couldn't figure out. So when I hit play again after a couple minutes, it started the movie over. Oh um, yes, and I could and not. Then- and I could not skip ahead skip it so we very good that you raised this point because we did i remember this i remember there was a ticket that came in about this and Mm. uh, we went and checked this and indeed you do have to pause first and then you can use the regular control to seek ahead so you can seek back we do not though currently store um it's our first release we do not Mm. currently store where you left off watching which we right. will add. Okay, but you that, can seek ahead. You just okay, pause I, first. That's why I couldn't. Okay. I'm like, I'm trying to figure it out. And I'm like, what the yeah, hell? You know what I it. ended up doing? I had to pull up, I pulled up my my iPhone mm-hmm. and I pulled up the remote on my thing and I just hit 10 seconds <laughs> skip. Nice. For like 50, 100 right, times. So you got back to the point. But I got back to the point. So I was like, I was like, this is annoying. This has got to be a better way. And I was like, ah, I'm not going to bug the disc. Well, I will right tell now. you, we, we pay attention to all the tickets because I did hear about that one and we went over it together in engineering. So there you go. But it Ryan, makes sense. So I guess it's on the block. You can't, I, uh, it makes sense. No, you actually, it so one thing I was going to say to the brass tacks of this, that's your native Apple player in the media app and the fabric serves just standard HLS streaming content with DRM as we mm-hmm. digital rights management, all that. Um, and then in this case, we're talking about the player control. So uh, 
just have to enable it to go forward. But what's important about all that and what we're really trying to do with the TVOS app is right, make this entertainment native. And I've appreciated so much what you said about Fire TV and the other um, device platforms because we actually have the wallet and lab running on Fire TV already. And um, we're going to bring that out next and also yeah. the Android OSs and start trying to work on some of the others too. Beautiful. So, well, that's yeah. what's beautiful about the Discord too is whoever mm-hmm. kind of you got on your team running it it's like the questions are there and they get it at least over the weekend and the week that i've been in there people get questions in are just like answered so quickly even my question about is the movie actually decentralized mm-hmm. and not stored on ip mcm mm-hmm. came out of nowhere and it was like boom 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 here's all your info and i go yeah That's i was reading that ryan's like yeah i was like can out. you please <laughs> pin that so that like i can go back to this and tweet it out or so if yeah, i need a reference point to go back to that but yeah. that, he was he or she, I don't even know, was um, amazing in that Discord. In your well, we Discord. we appreciate more people learning about us. I think one of the big things, and thank you so much for covering it on your podcast, is very few people in the Web three space know we exist. And um, in this case, I mean, we're not the face of these projects; they're all the you know mm. creators' projects, and all right. credit to them. Uh, but definitely, we we need people to um, come to our community and need people to join these projects. Mm-hmm. So I will scream from the rooftops about yeah, you guys yeah. because it, i i love it i love the fact that like it's old school tag i just love movies being released as nfts now like that's what drew me that's oh, the, that's super I've, cool to hear and i do think what one last thing on that that i'll pass that back to warner brothers i think there's i mean obviously huge you know, questions and experiments going on in marketing and all of the traditional media companies, because I I mean, even though they are traditional companies, they are trying to look forward in terms of how to reach their audiences where they are and also to expand engagement and to really make the most, they have tremendous IP. And uh, I I think it's been, it's just been a tremendous partnership to see how innovative WB is. And I think the, the, feedback that users give is very much heard so definitely vote with your feet yeah i yeah nice. i love it yeah love it. What, what was your uh feedback well on? well actually the reason i got all hyped up is because i just found a, a fellowship of the ring extended minds of moria edition which i'm a i'd rather have moria over the shire and it's not even that much more than I bought mine for. So I'm pissed now. <laughs> like, but I'm actually, I'm going to buy it right now. Well, no, you, you're going <laughs> to, it's 1646, you piece of, okay. But here's the thing. And this actually kind of leads into, because when I was going through the, the secondary market, the first thing I went to do on the sorting, and this might not be a you thing. Mm. I think this is, I don't know if you, because the oh, it could be us. movie yeah. verse they i was like and i was talking to ryan i was like did do you think they built this or warner brother or we did so talk was, with that yeah. yeah i was actually like okay the first thing i was thinking of when i went to go for the sorting filters mm-hmm. i was like i wanted to see your rarity or some of the trait mm-hmm. breakdowns and that's kind of what we're sometimes used to seeing and and i was yeah. just like look yeah, look yeah. under, and maybe this is something we should do in our menus. Look yeah. under the filters. If you look under the filters, you can actually filter it by rarity and uh, drops and other traits. If I am not mistaken, that's okay. what. So, uh, so that's how what do you I choose? Would do. You could do so. like you could do price low to high, and then you can choose. Yeah, the Lord of the Rings fellowship. Yeah, order. you can. Apply you can that. get the filters in there if too. I, but like, then that's only based on price. Okay, where would you be able to change it? So to if I choose rarity? the drop to Lord of the Rings and then we go to time and then currency, I like the currency. Here. Yeah, uh, dro- yeah. It doesn't see. say doesn't give you the option to to like filter via rarity. But I like the fact that you guys have the USDC. That is cool. Like, so yeah, I just um, noticed that, that it's a it show. Take a look at this, guys. If mm. I um, can show you, I you can think drop it this in the chat is, if you want. The, yeah, if you want to just look here, um, can't really change the Zoom share. I was going to show it to you. If you oh, look on you the access. sort, yeah, then you can actually do it right here. I think maybe we need to just put a little info on this thing here. Um, do you want me to share it out and I'll show you? Sure. Yeah. 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 It looks just like this, right? So share screen. And if you go in here, I just pulled the generic top level. Take a look at this. See this? Oh, Interesting. I, we yeah, don't and, have what, that. Yeah, and that's my, right here. Oh, right? this is different. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this and, is on um, Alluvio. Okay. Yeah, we are, he's on Warner Brothers. That's it, why. I'm on the Warner Brothers shell, but it's really similar. 
Uh huh. And I bet you what it's a very simple thing. I will bet you these are all configurable options. I would mm. bet you inside of Movieverse that this is not configured to be shown. So it's, I that's something gotcha. I can yeah. take back and do. That so would I, be, that's yeah, that's perfect. that is huge. Exactly. So can I ask a silly question? How do I get to the Alluvio marketplace? Um, Just wallet.contentfabric.io. Yeah. Okay. Right there. And or just directly into um, Alluvio and Discover Projects. Oh, and just go okay, into yeah. listings right there. Oh, and can I go the buy top the, level. the Dolly Wallet the NFT content in there? fabric? Okay. Oh, okay. This makes more sense. Making sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. Yeah, I guess it is just that one option for, yeah, on the movie verse. And I'll, I'll check that because these are just configurable. So we are yeah. the da the configurable data model and UI for that. And um, all of these are just built in. So I will, um, uh, and one other thing that I don't know if people care about this, but um, because this all is just a self-extending little model, um, if the rarity is set as a, as a uh, trait, it'll just show up in that, that index gotcha. so okay. area. This so, is good. Yeah, that's all that's needed. Oh, I wish so, I would have found this. Uh, yeah, so your, you know, your marketplace before I've. Either I, way, I, I, it's yeah. This is great. Easy I, enough to do. Yeah, yeah, I will say that. To be honest, I I'm going there. I'm here because you told me there, but I didn't I didn't navigate to here via your main site. So I'm still looking for that through way, but a direct almost, way. We'll find yeah. it. We'll find it. Yeah, this is way. Me, if you click here's media the way wallet, I would do and it. then I go yeah. media wallet and then projects in the top. Gotcha. That's gotcha. what I did. Exactly. And then it, it brings you to the whole list. You can and also you... go to alluv.io and you can oh. go directly there and you can actually click the projects. Oh, okay. That's even easier. Yeah. And that'll, <laughs> oh, yeah. that'll, there you go. that'll take you straight into the that little page. Button. So it's user right? error, not... not... <laughs> <laughs> well, the still the, the under the word movie, yeah. movie verse shell, it doesn't have that option. The Nothing, rarity, yeah. 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 So oh, it, attributes. Uh, yeah, you This is way better. There. Sorry. There you go. Sorry. It's not, well, it's just not those way two better. little just, categories yeah. aren't there. Okay, that, that works. <laughs> Sorry, WV. It's not maybe like, maybe you're cool. before you guys get that published, we can help them get that enabled here, right? On on the movie verse too. So we, it's not hard. You know what? Tell them to do a sprint. We got till Friday. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Tech sprint. Let's do it. Um, yeah, that was it. That was my comment. Uh other than that, I Thank started you. I started watching it. There was no buffer time, like streamed. I've been going through the other stuff. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm really excited to see what kind of title. Like the fact I didn't even realize, I didn't even think about the fact that the Flash was like the newest, like release, newest movie coming out, like brand new release. I didn't even think yeah. about that, but it is a a big deal. Uh, yeah. And for the film studios, those new releases are the really high value because obviously that's the money made now, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, all IP is valuable, but but that that's what made this so significant. First time a new release film well, has yeah. ever been released this way. And uh, Lord of the Rings was the first time any film had ever been released this mm -hmm. way. I, well, I, I love it because so we have interviewed a couple projects on um, Cardano that we did. Uh, they we they were an independent film and they released it on the blockchain, but it's not nothing. It still was it was great, but it was nothing like this with the special features and all that stuff. But um, yeah, it this yeah this takes it to a whole another level, and it just made me think because the Flash is only it came out June sixteenth, and the only mm -hmm. reason I know that is because my birthday was the day before, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna take my son there, and then like four weeks later, it's it's released as digital. I was like. That was remember the days when v VHS took eight months, <laughs> ten right? months to get released. Like back in the day, like now we're looking at what a three, three, four, five week turnover, and it's already available in your house. I love and it. I, I'm a big fan. <laughs> what one thing that I think that um, Web three holders would find um, very inspiring, um, they have a lot of impact on how this kind of NFT window. Uh, mm, is okay. handled in the future. I think the studios are trying to learn right now as what users would like. And obviously there's uh, many opportunities for exclusivity associated with it. For example, um, the flash includes two redeemable offers 
one for a DC that's comic right. and also a fan flicks coupon. And um, that's just the tip of the iceberg. And mm -hmm. you could imagine a world in which the NFT window is even more exclusive than the rest of the digital release window. Right, right. now, it, it is very much part of premium VOD, which mm -hmm. is already the early access premium release window. And depending on how fans uptake this, it could become even more special. Interesting. Okay. Cool. I even I, I want to throw an idea out there, and I'm almost tempted to just write it in chat. Uh, Ryan, here's because what I'll say. I don't. I don't. There's only two share. things I'll say. We have to be cognizant of, of Michelle's time, so that's one yes. thing. But if not, this is our podcast. Say what you got to say. <laughs> no, I'm gonna it's, I'm gonna type it in the, in the okay. chat. All right, all right, no problem, no problem. Is it for me or everybody? <laughs> What's happening here? It's um, for everyone. Okay. Go um, ahead. Uh, yes. So this is exciting. We got, we got a bunch of places, Michelle. Thank you. This is, this is pretty cool. Um, okay. So what would be your, um, oh, this, oh, oh, that's a great. Okay. Well, well let me talk about that. Ryan. You could do it. <laughs> I, Cause I don't want to bring it up. Cause I like, it's to me, that's a cool feature that a lot of, I don't know. Okay. Don't well, you gotta say, you gotta say something now. Well, okay. no, not at all. Okay. Anyway, talk about something else. We can, so I here, do have a question. We, we can you talk about that with Michelle offline. Shut up, Devon. <laughs> All <laughs> great say, ideas. Yes. <laughs> no, you brought up Chat GPT, and um, mm -hmm. are you well versed at all in AI at all? Like. Yeah, I I know a, a, quite a bit about it. I mean, I obviously not an AI engineer, but no, I no, do course. I do run a team here that at least. Uh, indirectly run a team here that have uh, five uh, AI scientists. So yes, wow. I know okay, quite a so bit you, about it. You must know about Origin Trail. Um, I do know about Origin Trail. And I they're... think that um, one of the things I was going to say about this whole uh, situation of chat GPT with content and generative models, right, is that, I, I mean, there is no doubt that the fear creators have is very real about, um, you know, AI really encroaching upon their whole being, uh, oh, um, yeah, I, reason yeah. for being right. But uh, uh, I, I also think that one of the great promises here is that this whole idea of being able to have content highly monetizable um, under the control of the owner is that the AIs could um actually have to consume from those blockchain controlled interfaces, meaning that they would then be paying the creator for um, uh, their use of training on the creative work itself. In fact, that's something that could be done against the content in the fabric. Um, it's a, a real thing. So, <laughs> so, you know, that's one angle on all of this. I'm, there are many other angles, but what, what were you going to ask? No, I was just going to say about the knowledge graphs and kind of like getting the true, what origin trail is doing with mm. their, you know, trying to filter out and gain truth for AIs. That's the low level basic that I understood of what they are really doing over there. But uh, I was just going to ask you about it. That's all. I, I, I'm I'm no expert on, mm. on the details of what they're doing. I've only yeah. read a little bit uh, uh, about it. And uh, I, I think that, um, I mean, look, we're sitting at a point now where it's clear that the, the generative bots are going to, I mean, they're already mainstreaming and mm -hmm. there will be, a confluence of these that are coming from all the major companies. Apple's now getting into the game along I with all of that. the other major yeah. players, right? And um, I, one can only imagine that we're going to end up with this sort of like new corpus that is more than the web. It's what these bots say the web is, right? right. And then from that, uh, at least again, you ask. I mean, way back in our conversation, you asked me how I, what I thought of blockchain before of it, before NFTs, right. Yeah. right? Well, I think this is another one of these points in time where I think that the the fact that they're going to give their version of what the web is is sort of uh, again underscores this whole value point of blockchain fundamentally all over again because i mean we we need a way that we can establish what truth is through the data on the internet we also need some scalable forms of governance 
we need scalable ways to compensate through transactions, all the, you know, the yes. party's digital work that's getting used in that. And um, I, I feel like this is a another role for uh, the blockchain to have a, you know, a, 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 a major position, if you will. Um, right now, most of the discussion obviously is, is, uh, uh, at best, um, trying to you know provide a little bit of governance. Most is is just about how phenomenal the AIs are. So, yeah, yeah. Mm. I don't know. That's uh, what do you guys think about uh, the Oregon Trail? D- Devon Devon loves his AI. Like he oh, went no, into some. Don't. He basically no, no, wrote no. a short story the one time we started talking about it <laughs> in our episode about it, like going into what was it low low power mode and taking over the world it's oh, oh. <laughs> remember, remember that but i, okay, I love listen. it in yeah, the introduction ahead. of like video games of like yeah. you know you're going into a bit like uh uh drawn a blank on the company Nvi- nvidia 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 yeah they just did the thing where it was like they, they have a game and you walk in and all the npcs are ais now where every interaction can be different every time you play a game like i like that yeah. kind of stuff the other stuff Oregon urgent tra- and all that stuff hurts my head. Mm. <laughs> it's so it's so like I love reading about it and trying to learn and I'll listen to Twitter spaces and stuff that they're doing and it's just it's uh very interesting of where the world's going with AI. I I really I'm fascinated and I can't I think that much like some of the other well it's it's not like anything else we've experienced and I don't think uh Many people understand. I don't understand, but I, I I think about what I've read as possible. And I try to take many different sources. And I guess most of what interests me is just when we try to black box AI and we're coming at that from our capability and our understanding of how to contain technology. And I think the what Ryan was talking about is that when I was looking at a study, and you probably heard about it, where they're trying to, you know, can find AI and they're saying, this is the goal you're trying to get to. And then essentially what the AI did was instead of like doing our silly little, little experiments, it figured out how to draw power from the simulation that it was in. And then essentially break the confines by like merging with, with, with it. And this is all digital, but I, th- I think about things like <laughs> when you try to black box AI and like, what if you have, you know, something you're trying to create and you're like, well, we're going to put it in the room. We're going to air gap it and the room's sealed or whatnot. And I don't know, but then essentially over time, you know, there's some sort of sensor in there and like the AI, AI can just and essentially use radio waves to communicate to different aspects of and items in the room. It could, it could like, it could overload the server. It could overload the disk that it's running on and make us think we have to swap it out, but have low level code existing in the um, the BIOS level that when you try to, you put it in another room before scrapping it, that it's using radio waves to communicate with things that it, it can find ways to get out of the hermetically. I think we think of it digitally and I'm thinking physical spaces that we think we can, t- can find this in don't even, might not be working in the way we think we do. I even think about like <laughs> silly things like I- IP extenders, you know, when they're going to use your house wiring to, you know, extend your, your router doesn't work really well. Well, just plug it into the wall and it'll, it'll scan your entire house and shoot your, your internet connection to, and it's like, that's what's happening with a router. And then there's also things like routers getting a sense of who's in the house by recognizing the feedback of the, of the waves. Like, so when we thinking we're air gapping AI and then Google's like, well, Bard, don't worry. Bard's like, it's all just, it's not even online. It's like, that doesn't help. None of this stuff helps. (laughs) Michelle, I think you understand yeah. Totally. The, well, the, the capability part, the, of what's here is pretty scary. <laughs> the, the part you guys are getting at that, I, I mean, again, I'm no expert. There's so many experts Neither on this, yeah. this sort of thing, but reinforcement learning has been the branch of AI that's really caused these very large scale models um, to, uh, I mean, to take off. And um, one of the facets of that, I mean, that's, it's sort of blatantly obvious in its name, but the 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 whole mechanism relies on trying to incentivize the mm. machine to behave in certain ways and then to optimize its behavior to uh, maximize achieving the incentive. Well, that kind of re- 
is now being applied, not just on the goal itself, but on sort of sub areas of the, uh, on the incentive structure, as well as on sub areas of these systems to the point that, I mean, having unintended um, consequences is, yeah. you know, far, far too easy, not to mention the fact that the scale is so overwhelming. And that's, that's the part where I think everybody starts to, I, I mean, even the the most gifted of gifted yeah. in the space, uh, even like Jeffrey Hinton, who is the father of back propagation. I mean, he himself has given a couple of lectures. I watched one myself mm-hmm. um, where, I mean, he, even he, you know, suggests that uh, it, the, the sheer combination of, of, of scale of these things makes it, yeah. um, uh, rightfully so, um, kind of unknowable and, um, it doesn't, you know, take anything away from continuing in this direction. Obviously we're going to do that. Right. But, yeah. um, uh, the, the, the sort of dystopian things people paint, I mean, they're, they're, they're not entirely out of the realm of possibility. In fact, you could actually give a <laughs> test where you could uh, give a, you know, a, an actual technical class where you, you could ask those questions, mm-hmm. um, explain how this could actually happen uh, with the model. One of the various yeah, things that you yeah, said. Right. So the, the part that, you know, I feel is I can do something about, and I find really interesting has to do with, with, um, making the most of creative IP. And I do mm-hmm. think making these AIs, um, become a, a new, um, n- not just audience, but, but, a, um, uh, a, a, agency consumer, right. Of mm-hmm. the, okay. of, of the, of the media and a new type of monetization is actually very interesting. Interesting. I, yeah. I look forward to helping to make that happen. <laughs> so, let's let's um, take some control how we can. Um, we can so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. I'm not going to go further into that. I think that at this point um, we have gone so many places. Yep. I, I think Michelle, if you were to, think about all the conversation we had and you're thinking about the listeners that are predominantly web three, but movie lovers as well. And also my mom and dad, Hey dad, Mm -hmm. Hey mom. Um, What's the CTA? What's the call to action that you might have for, Uh, for someone that's listening? Yeah. So thank you so much for asking. And I I hope that everyone will take a moment to visit web3.wb.com. And there you'll see the flash, which is our latest project and by far the most historical. Uh, And there you can visit the flash store directly and um, browse and partake in the project. Um, Also, you can look at some of the other movieverse projects we've talked about today, uh, Mm -hmm. Superman and Lord of the Rings. And then to learn more about Alluvio, you can visit eluv.io, alluv.io. Excellent. Um, awesome. do it. We've talked about the process, everybody. It's fun. You should own, if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, you should grab this. This is kind of the best thing you'll get to like the DVD experience that we've all loved. Um, I think that's it, Ryan. Anything else for you? I'm just cutting and pasting links I, to our doing, show yeah, notes. So it's, it's right. He's, he's already in, 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 yeah. Thank you so much, Michelle. Uh, this has been wonderful. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I always say my, the episode we're doing is my favorite, but this is also, it's my favorite. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, th- definitely. Th- thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. You guys are fantastic. By the way, do you want a, uh, a oh, yeah. URL coupon for your users? Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Off. Thank so you for, um, I was, yeah. I was going to, I was going to ask you what format you think would be the best to distribute. We can have a unique code for each person. It goes, it's a URL with the code like you got mm-hmm. when you got early access, yep. but it takes you to a discounted offer. Um, or it could, it, so it could be unique per person, or it could be just one that takes you to the 10 bucks off and you give it to everybody. Let's just do Probably. Yeah, just one. do the one, I think. Yeah, would be just the do best. the one. Perfect. And we'll do a, a number so, of X posts, not Twitter yeah. anymore. <laughs> That's great. X Sounds posts. ridiculous. That's great. X posts. No problem. We'll do some no, X posts. Th- thank you so much for promoting it there, you guys. That's great. And by the way, I'm going to get there. I looked at the the uh, Movieverse site. They, I see that they don't have the rarity enabled. I, I know exactly what to do about that. Oh, so we'll excellent. Get, we'll get that done before the secondary opens for the Flash. Cool. Uh, okay. Awesome. There's a... So, so thank you so much for the timeliness because um, the secondary doesn't open until August 1st. So mm. we have a really nice uh, week here where people can learn more about it and they can uh, pick up some more, gets to goes to more countries, more yep. people discover it. Thank you for getting the word out. That's the biggest problem is people don't mm. know. Right. Right. So. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's hard. It's a big, 
ecosystem out there for web three and just yeah uh, and if you're brand new you just where do you start like i was going to ask you guys that mm. where should we other than oh yeah. non-fungible guys no, yeah, yeah, should, yeah yeah where should we help to promote these projects twitter is good um it's hard with discord because it's like it's, it's i find web three is basically twitter and discord mm-hmm. yeah. yeah in my experience That's where it's where like and we were just talking with the uh, artist yesterday and Instagram's more visual. So maybe yeah. Instagram would be good too for um, yeah. the flash is visual. You got all the artwork yeah. to go with yeah. it. Yeah. So is, Instagram yeah, would there. be good. I'd say this. Um, first of all, you're doing a great job by coming on non-fungible guys. That's your, that's the, that's where that's you first Thanks for having me. You guys did it. <laughs> okay. So there's that, but realistically I, where, where I consume, I think we're, where Ryan's Instagram comment is true, but the bang for the buck, and a lot of people know this, and a lot of people have mixed uh, comments or things about the platform. For Web3, for sure, it exists on like uh, Twitter or X or even like Mammoth or whatnot or whatnot. Mm-hmm. But um, sorry, did I say Mammoth? Mastodon. 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 But uh, I would say, given what Twitter can do, or sorry, um, uh, TikTok can do with. True with uh, your ad revenue it's like it's almost like the early days of facebook over there where where Mm -hmm. early days of facebook you would put ad revenue out and you were getting conversion that was disproportionate to the saturation Mm -hmm. that facebook has achieved now or the other Mm -hmm. derivative platforms because all the major platforms seem to be derivative of facebook in a sense Mm -hmm. but over there on tiktok where the the algorithm and this whole way that it's set up it seems to be the only thing that gives me trouble, I'm not, I'm not a social media and addictive kind of person. Mm-hmm. And it and it literally can draw me when it just seems to know what to do. And I've talked to some other individuals who um who really are in that business, a, a friend mm-hmm. of mine who's in that business, that's his job. And he was like, for right now, this is the bang for your buck on terms of advertising. And they've got the content of movie spots. I'm sure they spend millions on mm-hmm. on advertising. Yeah. And then you need to highlight the um the fact that you're getting additional exclusive content that's not just you know the film not just the movie yeah Yeah, buy your nft version of the film why i'm gonna just watch it when it comes on when it comes whatever platform platform i have but if you're like you know and then a person's gonna have it watch the flash on you know whatever nft NFT exclusive and you're gonna have behind the scenes plus you yeah something like that that's gonna because that's TikTok true. will go really, really, the algorithm really serves you what you're looking for. So if I'm looking for AI mm-hmm. and tech yep. and crypto, yep. it's, 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 it's a ton of short form information from creators that are churning it out on TikTok. And I'd say that's where you're going to get people that don't know, you're going to get some clicks and then that conversion rate will come afterwards, especially when they see that they don't have to have the wallet and all that. And yeah, it's so know, much easier. Buy with, buy with credit card. So. Thank you so much for the nice yeah. comments. I really appreciated that. That was awesome. So I, I have I one good. quick question. Oh, sure. Yes. The, the unlockable content that's in mm. the experiences mm-hmm. are those separate NFTs? No, they're all well. bundled, but that they could be. So they could okay. be minted separately. But uh, Warner Brothers, because they they do have certain licensing rights, yeah, they yeah, yeah. have to keep it all together. Right. Okay, as but one. down the road or some other company. Oh, you absolutely. Could do, you could do an all experience, but then as you're unlocking content, you could sell it individually. You could sell them individually. Whoa. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Ryan, that's a good question. I was actually totally. wondering that. So in our you case, that by paying for it? Or yeah. You could. So in our case, all the media is completely unbundled. Mm. And furthermore, oh, okay. you can mint any combination of it. Groups, singles, doesn't matter. That's, that's this, what I mean. The, it's huge. Yeah. That, the that's fact why that, the listing is so large. Right? Yeah. It's, well, and that that's also, I, I think, the flexibility of the platform. I mean, people have just started to get into doing right. these true like media NFTs. You know how they were in the beginning. Yeah, people yeah. would just come to us because, oh, they can mint NFTs. They didn't realize all of this capability. And then as as far as what gets minted, that's all up to the publisher. And the reason I know Warner keeps those bundled together in that case is just because of how they view these. I mean, it throws back to the age old DVDs. But as far as could you have those be um, individually um, uh, tokenized? Yes, absolutely. A, that would be hmm. huge yeah. for. Yeah, I think that would drive in a lot of people because it's like, oh, totally. I bought them. I get the movie, but then 
I could I could sell some, off this. Exactly. It's almost That's like a fort, cool. playing Fortnite and selling off skins and yeah, stuff. I agree. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I, I would want some of those. Yeah. And and I am going to tell them that uh, as good feedback because they're always looking to see kind of like how people would think of it. Right. The DJ so. and me, one hundred percent. I'd be like, I got the movie. I can sit anytime and watch it with my yes. kid. If he loves this thing, or if I want to buy this yes. object that he wants to show. Because you can so display let me sell it in this. AR, right? Yes. Yeah, you can yeah. display. There's AR capable yes. displays nowadays. Yeah, totally. Right? So, so, yeah, I just want to bring that up before. No, that's, that's a great, a great I'm, idea. Yeah, actually. I'm glad you said that. Actually, how many Lord of the Rings um, copies are you going to own, Ryan? I know. I'm literally like, if I'm buying more than one, you're probably I'll, I'll, I'll probably grab the set. I spent like five hundred dollars on a movie that I own like ten times. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> that's right. awesome, you guys. So, <laughs> so. I'll get you the URL. I think it's terrific. Um, and uh, I need to actually make one of those discount URLs. So we'll do that this week. You say it will air on Friday. So if I get it to you before then, you'll have it in time to give yep. it to people. Yep. Fantastic. 100%. Thank you for That's that. Amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, all on its own. I mean. And, and I think also you guys, um, it, I know the whole, uh, well, you guys mentioned, you know, Hollywood, um, I know they're just lo- looking for the right ways to reach people. And I am sure we can get one of those people to come on your show uh, if we can keep the momentum going. So I will definitely work on that for you all. I'd love Sweet. to be the, the yeah. beacon for people to speak on our podcast. <laughs> totally. You, by the way, you do a great job together. You're very natural. You have no problem keeping the conversation flowing. It's really great. Thank you oh, very much. much appreciate it. So I really enjoyed it a lot. So, and I'm sorry I talk so much about the tech, but it's kind of the the story, right? It's the thing. Don't so. be sorry. I, I I totally love it. We like we like deep diving, and we do have some really technical people in the uh, in the community, and that we chat yeah. to. And it's not every episode. Sometimes Ryan and I are just total ridiculous people. But then <laughs> oh, we then yeah, we, we pull it together for this, and we're like, you know what? Yeah, we're okay. You did a great <laughs> job. Right? How, by the way, much. how did you decide to start this? <laughs> oh, wow. You, go okay. ahead, Devon. Yeah, you can tell the story. Okay, cool. So I go over to Ryan's house. I am I think, was that when I, when we, it was a dinner night? You mm. came over because you wanted to tell me about, you were planning a conference. Yeah, okay, and right. I, was... And I threw the idea of, have you heard of POAPs? Right. So the proof of attendance protocol. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I was she, like, she you, could, stuff. Yeah. you could tie that into your ticket sales or, or any booth at the event. Yeah. And he's like, what the hell are you talking about? So we started talking about all that stuff. And he's like, we should be doing a podcast. I was like, because we were at okay. a kitchen table. He talked, started PO apps and then <laughs> everything else, NFTs. And we were talking, I want to say it was like two hours or something like that. And I was yeah. like, this is a podcast. This is so good. And then, and then you, he, Ryan's just like, sure. And I'm like, <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. And, and that's like, how it started. That's, and, that's he, it. and I'm like, and that's it. And I was bought like, some, I already had the headset for yeah. gaming on the PC. And then, yeah, we got a and I was like, okay, microphones cool. and that's it. And I was like, oh my sure. gosh. And he's fantastic. like, sure. So then I was like, okay, here's our goal. All, all we have to do is do eight episodes. That's all we do. After eight, we decide, do you want to quit? And if you don't want to quit, we keep going. So we hit episode number eight and at nine we were like oh that's cool let's do it we didn't care too much for it. and like we literally will ask ourselves hey do you want to quit and he's like yeah no so we've been saying that and just in case you're wondering michelle this is this when it airs is episode 101 <laughs> whoa yeah. that's a great yeah. number <laughs> yeah we recorded episode 100 yesterday yesterday yeah. oh! Yeah, oh, I love it. I'm so excited. Yeah, That's you're all set at the start of volume three because we do it like 50. <sighs> so so I was like, Brian, don't forget when we publish this, Michelle is going to be episode 101, the first episode in volume three. We're so excited. And I was, I literally was like, do you want to quit? <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> so that's that's the conversation. I was like, now. do you want to quit at after a hundred? Like we didn't, we passed eight. We're good, you know. So yeah. That's, Congratulations. That's you guys Thank are you amazing. Much. Thank you. And you're and you're both in Canada. Is that right? Yep. We're yeah. like 25. Well, now he moved a little bit farther away, but yeah, yeah. we're about yeah. 25 I'm Toronto, minutes. Toronto proper. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Right, right in the core. And he's at I, the, boon, the boonies. Yeah. Oh man. So I hope I could do something worthy enough to get back on your show in the oh, future too. Just based on the we way were gonna you, ask you to come yeah. back. All right. Oh, we're just gonna right. do that. All your line. knowledge. <laughs> Never get this person on again. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. No, no, no. I love 
just listen. I'll sit back and just most interviews, I'll just sit back and chime in every so often. And Devon <laughs> just takes over and it's, rolls with it. It was fun. The really first, hyper. Yeah. The, no, the first half of the episode, I was like, man, you guys are digging deep into stuff. And it's, it's, I loved it. Go deep. That's so, how. I, so hopefully you can cut a nice blend for people that are not into like all the like, no cuts. Weeds. We're going start. Um, to finish. Going to, no, it. Honestly, we don't, Michelle, we cut we're, nothing. We're we just started. All right. There you, go. you think it's all right. All right. Yeah. Oh well, no, it was cool, great. So. It was great. There are some individuals that are really going to like that. Yeah. Yep. That's I'll give cool. you, we'll definitely email or whatever. We'll give you the feedback for what people. Uh, That's yeah. great. Did. I like yeah. to see that. Cause I like, am always learning, you know, I mean, obviously I've been doing this kind of thing for a long time, but the, you know, web three community is something I listen to. I, I follow the bankless podcast, even though they annoy oh, cool. me sometimes. And I try <laughs> to constantly awesome. uh, learn, right? Yeah, yeah. So, well, you know what I mean? So yeah, sure. that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I'll let you guys get on with your evenings. Thank you again cool. so much for interviewing me tonight. And I'll get you over. I'll email you that uh, discount URL as soon as we got it together. Sweet. Perfect. Love I it. I guess, Devon, start the music. Music is what? started. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to well, add Thank you post. very much. <laughs> thank uh, you. I guess, Devon, NFGs. We out. We out.